Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum Stay Curious program. I'm Mark Marquette and this is Travis Thompson. Yes, sir. How y'all doing today, Travis? Doing real good. Well, we're been... glad that you're all here to stay curious. We got a video podcast we've been doing for over two years. Yeah. And most Fridays we have Travis Todd Thompson, who is well known now as the lead of the astronaut closeout crew. Correct. Yep. And uh, we've got one flight today that I didn't pull the the uh, the full uh, logo up of it or launch dog on it. That's what I forgot to do. But uh, we had STS um, eighty six was launched to this the officially the first flight to the International Space Station. Okay. Uh, in nineteen ninety nine. Ninety nine. And that had to be exciting. Uh, up yeah. there, Romo was the the commander. Rominger, right, and uh, it had on there three women, all yeah. right, and uh, the the women were. Uh, well, we'll look at that in a minute, yeah. as, as we go down down the line here. But we wanted to. We're going to talk about the early '80s with Travis, and <laughs> and, a, and a little bit about uh, uh, how this man started uh, with the shuttle program at age 19 and worked with it through its uh, its end in in 2011, and. Uh, you know, you, you grew up with it. Yeah, I did. Definitely and, grew uh, up with uh, it. And, and from tr from uh, screams of joy to, to, <laughs> to streams of tears. I mean, it's been a, a heck of a ride there. It was sure, a roller brother. coaster, that's for sure. In there. But we want to first thank um, Hyatt Place for yep. sponsoring Stay Curious Studios. Love it there. Uh, we've moved into a gallery in our museum. Uh, the Hubble Gallery is no more. It was temporary. And our board of directors wanted to move Stay Curious into its own little place so we could uh, uh, be out of everybody's way, but it'll make <laughs> our content and so forth a lot better. Except I forgot my SS-96 <laughs> stuff today, uh -huh. but uh, which is a great mission. There's your office. Yep, that's my office. How, how high up in the air? 195 feet from yeah. the zero level of the MLP. It's 195. So you're really 300. And right beside a, a fully fueled solid rocket booster, a <laughs> yeah. candle sitting there, yeah, uh, anytime uh, waiting to go off. But uh, yeah, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that in there. Uh, did they have the windows covered and take it off at a certain point? Yeah, it's certain. Uh, it looks like the window covers are off there. Am I correct? It looks or? like it to me. Uh huh. And, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, well, how would they get the windows on and off of there? The cover? Well, the when the, when the RSS, the rotating service structure is around the ship. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. That, sure. that when it, it, there's a room that's called the, uh, window room is actually what it's called. Really? Okay. I want to say it's, uh, on the RSS, you, go, you right walk there. around the RSS on the 215 foot level, you get, instead of hitting 195, you hit 215 in the elevator, huh. you get out and then you walk around the other side of the ship on the RSS, the rotating service. Huh. That's something that the Artemis doesn't have out the pad. Right. Or the, the Saturn V also had a structure that covered up yeah. a lot of it to work on out there. Weather so. protection. Something. Weather protection, yes. Yeah. So uh, that was a concern. We're going to talk about Artemis here in just a minute. Good. Uh, but there is <laughs> Triple T back in July. When, yeah. Tell everybody what's going on there in front of Discovery. Yeah, my uniform that Alan Poindexter told me to go get my uniform and so I did and he, uh, astronaut, astronaut rest in peace yes. uh, Alan Poindexter and uh, he presented it there uh, Valerie and then they after COVID I guess they changed their display and they put it up so now it's on display and the reason I'm okay with that because Pam Milroy who's now deputy director for mm -hmm. NASA uh, she said behind this uniform is a long line of space workers. So Good. as long as I'm representing, I'm happy with that. Well, that's Travis. He <laughs> wants to, to take everyone with him and, yeah. and acknowledge that uh, he was just a one member and the astronaut closeout crew. It was an elite group of people with, with uh, definitely... Uh, defined <laughs> skills. Yeah. It was just one of the many elite crews that were yeah, out there. Yeah, there was a lot of different... Yeah, we heard a great program by Mikey... Haddad on the space payloads of putting squirrel monkeys and rats <laughs> yeah. in a space lab with the uh, shuttle vertical on the pad yeah. in, uh, uh, in 1984. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Oh, yeah. I remember watching them uh, wheel them in on in the cart. They had these little special carts. Yeah, a RAF is, yeah. is the acronym. Yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. We showed that day, a RAF. 
and uh, which was the uh, uh, oh, I forget what rack uh, is. I got roll some, around I, something. I, I have to, <laughs> maybe need to have those laying around me here, uh, but the. Um, but it, a man was on a, a cable and went down in there and yeah. in his seat and all, and he practiced it over and over and over. Yeah. You have to watch that one, Travis. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna look back in your life a little bit. Like I said, this is it's always interesting to be around Travis because he is a child of uh, the space program. Yeah. Tell everybody where you were born. Vandenberg Air Force Base. No way. On the base. You're yeah. making that up. And they can't even. They don't do that anymore. And there's no hospital. Right. So, and uh, your mom was a human resources, and yeah. your dad was? My dad actually was the, uh, like, the supply sergeant. He worked motor pool, and he was a chief master sergeant. Mm -hmm. And then they both come over here? And... and then she transferred here, and we moved when my dad retired from the Air Force. And, and she ended up being in charge of HR. And when my dad got laid off from the Apollo program, I guess he signed his papers because yeah. she was in charge of HR. I heard, Thompson, you need to get a job. He said, I had a damn good job, and you fired me. So <laughs> I heard that for years. Well, here you are uh, uh, in the early days, about 19 uh, <laughs> my mom... shuttle, shuttles launched in uh, 81 for the first time. So is this that period? Yeah. You got party in uh, business in the front, party in the back <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where are you? What's going on I'm here? I'm sitting actually where I'm not supposed to be sitting on the So you new take a toilet. picture of it on the film. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, That's on the toilet because this, the white seat is not man rated for. The only thing it's rated for is zero G. Oh, So yeah. you're not really supposed to sit on it. I see. <laughs> again, something that goes to space that doesn't need to be strong mm -mm. Uh, in space is not that strong on Earth, just like... Marty yeah. Winkle, our co-producer here, and Streamlabs engineer. Marty, thank you for all you do. We've had a good, great week of breaking in our new room. Yeah. But Marty worked on the lunar module, uh, uh, and you could not climb up and down those stair, those uh, uh, ladder yeah. on the ground because they would break because they were built for one six for gravity. One six gravity, yeah. And I keep forgetting about that all the time. So you're in the shuttle commode. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the potty. All right. <laughs> And there, there you look pretty in a hairnet there. Yeah, and I, had, I just saw that other picture. I just took it off, and the guy snapped the picture. You can see me holding it because you're really not supposed to take your. Oh, you're, you got your hairnet. Yeah, you see, my, I got my yeah. hat in my hand. <laughs> I just took it off, took the picture, and then I put it back. Well, seeing on. these memories, what, what's, <laughs> what, what comes back to you there? You know, I, I mean, played softball then. I was really active, athletic, doing a lot. You know, staying in shape because of my new job. I was just getting on to the closeout mm -hmm. crew. Making good money. Making good money, yeah. Here, so. in, the, here in the beautiful <laughs> paradise of Florida. Yeah, it was a in lot there. of fun. How about the friends you think about? Uh, I still have some really close friends, especially the guys I played softball with. We were called the Rowdies. Oh, really? And uh, we lived up to our, <laughs> our uh <-huh>. name. <laughs> Or did you win? Oh, yeah. We won 22 straight games one season. All right. That was awesome, yeah. The Rowdies. That the rowdies. would make you pretty damn arrogant and rowdy. Yeah, we it? were a little rowdy back then. Well, good memories <laughs> looking back with Travis there uh, on a wonderful career. And uh, uh, we appreciate his willingness to take time to share that. He's a, yeah. a, a docent occasionally here at the American Space Museum. You plan to be here tomorrow? Yeah. Anybody for... in the area want to get a good tour and hear true tales from the white room come on by yeah come on see me we wanted just a couple little bit of space history before we get back to talking about one specific thing that you and your dad did for the show era right is uh we had a great interview with uh, ashley nelson uh, a, a very informative young lady that is an artemis communications right. expert on the ground uh, uh ground services they call it there are your artemis contacts and we heard through the grapevine today that June 6th, midnight, is when they're going to start rolling Artemis out again. And uh, Back to 39B. Yep, back to 39B. Uh, they did it, uh, they started it last, uh, they did an afternoon, about 6 o'clock. Right. And about 4 in the mornings when they got it back, uh, got it out. It's about an 8-hour process. Yeah. So if they started it at midnight, they'll have it out there. 
uh, uh, on <laughs> June 6th, sun up. So uh, that'll be some spectacular photos maybe yeah, I bet. out there. So Mark Usiak is coming down for it. We'll see him. Good. Uh, also, Chris Kelly, the renowned space artist uh, who has an exhibit going on right now in Washington, D.C., will be our guest this week of the rollout. So we have some big announcements with Mr. Chris Kelly and his famous uh, dad, Paul, that uh, have done U.S. stamps on Apollo. Right. His dad, Paul, did the the all the, the Gemini uh, oh, uh, whoa, whoa, Ed yeah. White spacewalk stamp yeah. and the double stamp of the rover. Isn't that cool? And uh, docking of Apollo 8. And, and, I like uh, stuff like that. Well, we're going to have a big announcement on that in a couple of weeks here. Good. So Artemis will be rolling out. We've heard now June 6th at midnight that night, that day. I bet there'll be some people there. <laughs> and uh, had a beautiful launch. This uh, a couple uh, young ladies watching next to the VAB is Pad 40. Right. I had somebody challenge me that we had a, a launch on Pad 41 the other day. And he said that was a, uh, he questioned that the VAB split 40 and 41. Because oh. they look so close on Cape Canaveral yeah. Space. Depends Force. on where you're, yeah. But over here, right uh, at the Max Brewer Bridge and Space View Park, they are splitting the, that pet. But yeah. that has the human remains of 47 people who paid a company, Celestis, to orbit the Earth uh, until they re-enter in a thousand years. And we had on our friend Emily Carney, another interview conversation with Emily, Space Hipsters number one. Yeah. If you missed that interview with her, great little program, we think, and talked about working for Celestis. In uh, uh, it's about five thousand dollars, Trav. But, yeah, or but uh, that's you know, not not too bad after I've your cremation, that, I guess. I've got a friend of mine who was an OVCC uh, orbiter vehicle closeout chief, uh huh. And uh, his son wants me to do anything I can to get his dad's ashes. I just don't have five thousand dollars. Well, you give it the money, and then we'll get <laughs> we'll get you up there, type of yeah. Thing. So, uh, but anyway, uh. Uh, it's it's uh, amazing. Uh, really, every month there's almost three launches, uh, al almost once a week. It's, yeah. A couple times uh, they come in spurts. I walked and, out uh, of the Harley shop the other day, and I was the only one out there watching that launch. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, how about the, when the, the first stage came back? We're, uh, did you hear that boom? Yeah, I did. And we're Marty. about, what, Marty, 12, Thir 13 yeah. miles away from that landing site over there. Did it was it was a a louder boom than any of the roars of the launches. I it heard. it came back to pad thirteen, did it not? I believe yes, yeah. it did. Thirteen. Yeah, yep. yeah. Wind blowing this way. Yeah, wind blowing this way too. It yeah. was a little windy too. But yeah. uh, that boom was a definitive goodbye to those beautiful people that are now orbiting Earth as part of uh, the Celestis uh, uh, interplanetary uh, funeral mm -hmm. service is, is what it basically wow. is. Well, we wanted to let everybody know that you may now see over 400 items that are up for grabs in our 20th American Space Museum charity auction that will be conducted uh, June 25th online or here in our museum. You may come and bid in live person. We won't have any of the items here to see live. They'll be on up on the screen. But uh, have you ever wanted to own a legendary uh, astronaut's autograph or rare NASA photographs? Uh, maybe, Travis, you want a real <laughs> rocket engine in your space cave. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? Or how about owning a real Mercury escape motor? Uh, okay. Well, the escape motor's on the left there, the red. Okay. On the right is a rocket. It's a, it's a rocket dyne uh, engine. Rocket All right. dyne, yeah. In the middle there, you've got the top is the crude signed crew signed apollo 11 insurance cover wow those typically go for five to seven thousand dollars all authenticated by our collection expert and and uh, auctioneer chuck jeffrey right yeah as well as chuck always has uh ken havocott and uh other uh uh, uh zarella is another uh um I forget John, not John Zarella <laughs> of the Pizza Place and CNN reporter, but another man Zarella who's an auth expert in autographs. So you can be sure you're getting the Apollo 11 crew there. You just need to drain your bank account of about three <laughs> to five thousand dollars. But you can put your bid in right now. These items are up there. We want you to go to our website, 
American Space Museum. The link is on our Facebook page I just posted. And uh, you can put a pre-bid in there and even put what your maximum bid would be. So if you want to go $5,000 on this cover, but you're bidding and it only gets up to $4,200 and, 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 and the, the guy bails that's, that's against you, you know, you get it at that $4,200. Okay. Uh, it's not bumped up there. So also there's a, uh, a Apollo 17 permanent firing room pa uh, a badge. Bad. That's worth hundred to three hundred dollars in the pair of dice see those pair of dice now I, yeah belong to gene cernan he took him to the moon no uh on on yeah. the, the <laughs> apollo 17 lunar module 11 marty 12, 12 thank 12. you 12 was uh lm 17 lm 12 uh challenger was its uh uh handle name there so and there are just tons of photographs and astronaut autographs and uh, it's fun to watch yeah. so we want you to to go and preview our 20th charity auction go to our website or look at our facebook post a link will take you right there uh this uh we also have a, a, a just all kinds of things on there and uh you can see the estimate that chuck thinks they'll go for on there also good and you're you're no stranger to those auctions you yeah. made a, <laughs> a little bit. benefit of a few coins in there tell uh, somebody has one of your your 135 closeout crew manual yeah my uh, book i call it the book and uh you wanted to keep these things your your white room closeout crew another uniform but you have no place to put them and yeah. and uh i live in the woods by myself well you don't live in the woods by yourself <laughs> but it's like a uh uh he's a troll under a bridge no <laughs> um no what i'm saying is you reach a time in your life where either you keep this stuff or you get rid of it yeah. or someone else is going to get rid of it yeah. and not know what it is. Right. Correct. So, Correct. And we can talk to Chuck at our museum. We'll set you up with Chuck Jeffrey. Uh, he does appraisals for free. Right. Well, I wanted to brag a little bit that I met this astronaut this week, Marcos uh, uh, Pointus, mm -hmm. Brazil's only astronaut, and he become the Brazilian Minister of uh science technology and innovation and we hope to have him in our museum someday with our steam program right. so a great amiable guy he did train travis with the the shuttle astronauts right but his mission the science mission got canceled in the lab he was going to be on and they moved it to, to the uh, uh space station okay so he went up with the uh, uh, russian crew Soyuz. on expedition 13. okay yeah he went up there um oh i who did he go up there with i can't that escapes me but um at the moment but i was wondering if you knew him uh or, or any of the brazilian groupies that were i don't remember there. being an entourage yeah. you know but yeah there was a lot of love the brazilians yeah I lot, what too. a fun loving uh nation and serious about their space uh san paulo's where they're going to be having some space and we've got other friends in brazil that'll prop up from time to time yeah but we want to wish a happy birthday tomorrow rocking a beard there <laughs> like us okay yeah uh, the 77 years old tomorrow to uh, the first uh, Australian in space. This is, of course, Paul Desmond Scully Power. He was born May 28, 1944 in Sydney, Australia. He is a revered national hero in Australia, still active uh, in his love of oceanography and space exploration. His only mission was STS-41G in 1984. He would, of course, flown again had it not been for the Challenger accident. But I love this. He refused to shave his beard. No, I like that. NASA initially ex just expected him to shave his beard before the space flight, yeah. but allowed it after he was able to demonstrate that it didn't affect his helmet's seal. Right. So, number one, that's his space suit, the blue flight suit, basically. Right, yeah. The helmet was not even as elaborate as a nascar driver had back in it the was day. like a motorcycle helmet that had calm in it it was really just not a lot of safety features just so when they're banging their heads around there yeah. such was the and confidence it, it clamped, if i remember it it kind of opened up and clamped down uh-huh so it wasn't you know 
one of the fire chiefs told him, he said, you know, if you guys want to lose an astronaut in the ocean where they're supposed to bail out in case there's a problem, he said, if you want to lose them in the blue ocean, that's the best camouflage to give them. <laughs> so that's when we went to the orange. Right, the pumpkin blue. Suit. And the, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, quite frankly, looking 10 years past the end of the mission, nobody really thought that was going to work. No. Nah. It looked good on paper. Yeah. They turned to orbit or, or ocean RTLS bailout. Or... <laughs> there is a, a Mr. Um, Scully Power. And there's his... and uh, there's his blue suit there in the Sydney Museum there. That's him a couple years ago, still rocking a beard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's sort of like, wow, what were they thinking? You would think <laughs> you'd even want something like an F-15 jet fighter hat or something like that to yeah. make you feel like you were <laughs> in a space suit. But you might as well just just grab your 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 Saturday overalls and, <laughs> and uh, jeans and a shirt yeah. it was fine to ride to space, right? Yeah. And then you put, had the orange pumpkin suits that would not keep you alive in the environment of our space, but no. they were designed for what, Travis? To bail out. Okay. You know, because it had a harness, parachute, had survival gear that was uh, salt water activated in mm -hmm. case you were unconscious when you hit the water, and it would inflate and keep you buoyant mm -hmm. so uh there was a lot and, of safety they had uh die pack. sticking them uh, nightsticks in people's yeah. uh, shoulder there. that's the last thing i did before in the white room is i put break a light stick and stick it in your sleeve in their orange pumpkin suit that sole purpose it lasts 12 hours mm -hmm. so it's in case they had to bail out into the ocean they would Sweet. Well, good. Well, happy birthday to him. Let's uh, <laughs> let's look at the shuttles of uh, May uh, here yeah. real quickly. We've uh, uh, gone through. Uh, uh, there's uh, STS ninety six uh, is tomorrow. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sorry. It's today's launch, the twenty seventh, nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Uh, uh, Rominger, who uh, I would love to meet him. Yeah, he was. He, cool. he's, he seemed he was a five time shuttle flyer, twice a commander, uh, uh once a uh, twice a pilot, three times a commander. I don't know if you got anything to say about him, but not really. I just remember, you know, yes or no, sir. <laughs> uh, but Rick Husband was the pilot on his one and only flight, yeah, and then his second flight, he was going to be the commander of STS-107, well, he was the commander of 107, Columbia. And uh, you know I'm always impressed by these one-time pilot and... Um, uh, oh, yeah, uh, and then they go to commander. A, they become a commander. Yeah. Because uh, uh, somebody like like uh, 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 Kurt Brown, he was three times a pilot. Yeah. Three times a, <laughs> a commander. Uh, but And then we had Julie Payette, Canadian on there, to become a Canadian... Minister of uh, something yeah, over something, there. Something, yeah. Uh, you had a, a Russian on board. You had Ochoa, uh, okay. Ellen Ochoa, who become, uh, she had four flights, and Ellen Ochoa become the first, uh, the Female. second woman and first uh, Hispanic first director Hispanic. of Johnson Space Center. Uh, Jernigan. Right. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, Barry were on board. So you had Payette. Jernigan was Jernigan's first name. I want to say. Kathy or uh, uh, and Ochoa. And oh, I don't know why I didn't load those pictures up because she I had I had them put together. She was doing a, I have them posted on Facebook. That's where I oh. and she did a, 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 a spacewalk with Barry. This was the infant days of the space shuttle. OK, yeah, uh, where it is just the Zarya Russia uh, command module control center with the Destiny Lab attached to it. So. One more shuttle of the month, STS-124 in 08, is launched on the 31st. They took up the Kibo Japanese yeah. laboratory on that one with the crew of seven. And uh, uh, Karen Nyberg was on that. And um, uh, Scott Kelly, uh, one of the Kelly, Mark Kelly was commander Mark. of that. So uh, 10 shuttles of, of May. Uh, 59 astronauts, I believe. Let me just make sure I got that that right 10 shuttles of may sounds uh, right and uh we uh we we've well we've enjoyed looking at them all i don't have that handy so and i heard from uh, today hugh harris voice of nasa i gotta call him back because he's getting ready to do 
our shuttles of June oh. start next month. I believe it's June already. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, we'll we'll rock it. We'll launch that off. So, um, well, Marty, thank you for giving me a list. Of Phil Pickles is watching. Hey, Phil. Glad that you're staying curious. Tanya Thompson, hey, right, daughter. your daughter. Yeah. Tammy Horton Douglas, Kathy uh, Marquardt Izzo. All right. Hi, Kathy Marquardt Izzo. Alta Muris uh, Sergio. All right. Key Sewell, good friend of the Muir Museum. He used to be the astronomy uh, the guy here. Now he's the astronomy professor up at the local college. Cynthia Rossi, thank you for staying curious. We've got uh, Rizel Bombay, Christina Greer, new names, Jason Comer, cool. William Dodson. Thank you all for watching. Of course, we got a lot of regulars there. Dave Stangy's yeah. hanging out with us again. <laughs> Carlton Bailey. Hi, Carlton. Hey, Carl. Hang, hang tight, Carlton. We're going to end the show with one of his great images. Yeah. Uh, Bonnie Smith, thank you for watching. And Mark Usiak is watching, probably Good. with Chris Cowley. Uh, artist Chris Cowley's got a great display going on at the Smithsonian as we speak. And, cool. And uh, uh, Chris Cowley's uh, manservant, Mark Usiak, is there to <laughs> help him out. And so uh, we're glad of that. You got a comment or question, Marty? Yeah, Carl Usiak is saying it's Tamara Jernigan. Uh, oh, Tamara Jernigan. Tamara. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's why I thank couldn't you. figure it out. And uh, yes, she's a very beautiful woman. And uh, she had. Uh, Four space flights, I believe. Wow. If I'm thinking right. So thank you all for watching. Stay curious. Yeah, my uh, but we're gonna we're gonna talk a, a, a few minutes here about this picture. And we're gonna bring <laughs> the Thompson uh home shop and, and woodwork uh, <laughs> show uh here with you. <laughs> because uh this this kind of flipped me out when you I first heard you talking about it. Yeah. But you and your dad actually made Pieces, parts, and bits that flew in space. Yeah, and I this did. is a pretty important thing. Tell us what you're leaning up against. That it. is called an emergency egress slide board, and my father and I built it. It took me three days. I had to get what was called an AVO. You know, we love acting. Avoid verbal orders. Yeah. Okay. So I had it little, signed little three part form, and I had it signed by upper management that I could take this off of base because you'd see me driving my little cj5 jeep and this thing sticking out the back of my jeep and i'd get pulled over by the ksc's finest what do you you're getting ready to go out the gate with that you know obviously and why your, were you going out the gate yeah because i had to take it to my dad's shop what i did was i had the les the the machine shop on the base mm -hmm. cut it out for me they cut it out made it a straight solid piece of aluminum I took it home to my dad, had a press, and we bent the end so that it would lay flat on across the hatch going from the white room, or the hatch into the white room. Uh -huh. In case I had an incapacitated astronaut, we could just drag them out over that. So I had to make sure that it fit. And it took three days going back and forth. And you see there's big holes in it. I cut the big holes so fire rescue, if they had their big bunker gloves, that they could still be able to pick that up. Mm. So, and I had it bent like that. Well, there's a long bend in the one side that would not fit in my dad's press. So I said, Dad, what are we going to do? I need this bent. For one thing, it gave it structure, made it stronger mm -hmm. with that bend in the aluminum. I said, Dad, I, I need it bent all the way down here. What are we going to do? And my dad smoked cigars, and he lit, lit a cigar, and he sat back, and a couple minutes, he goes, oh, I know what we'll do. So I put three cinder blocks down, and I built a wood ramp out of a two-by-four that we had, and I clamped the, the board to it, and I left about that much aluminum sticking off of the side and my dad drove his jeep back and forth oh my god on the aluminum until it bent the way i wanted it i laid by the jeep going by the tire going yeah i like it so that's how we bent it then i took that's it that's pretty space age yeah not. yeah <laughs> and then i took it to the it's real like the flintstones doing something yeah <laughs> you would think and my dad's jeep so uh it took three days back and forth and then when I walked into the museum, I saw it because this is the one we used for training. 
And uh, yeah, you didn't know it was here in the museum. No, at all. I didn't. At I don't. All. Uh, we got it from Fireman uh, uh, Lee Sterrick. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm glad it showed up because I then I gave it to the LES shop and told them to make me two more. And they made one for pad A and one for pad B that stayed in the white room. Mm -hmm. And if you look in those pictures of any of the white room pictures, there's also a little red triangle sticker that I had to make in case somebody ever came up there. They know it points this way out. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, that's interesting. Well, you know, so this was the spread uh, from the uh, hatch opening into right. the white room. Correct. And remind everybody what was between that gap. There was about a 13-inch gap, and we had these plastic billows that were full of air. So it was like a big, if you stepped on that, you would keep going. How far down? 195 yeah, feet. Right. Bouncing off of wings, bones, pods. Yeah. <laughs> a wing, take your arm or torso yeah. off. and. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, what was different from pad A and pad B, I think, is about two inches. One was uh, pad B; it was like an eleven-inch gap, uh -huh. and then pad A was like thirteen. Huh. Or uh, we have in our auction an optical laser device that was used, Marty, to line up the Saturn V rocket. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, and S one S one S four Bs on the pad so that they were lined up properly. Do you ever yeah. recall anything like that on the shuttle uh, uh, to, to line it up, talking about these? Uh... They did when I remember they did some type of laser thing when we would stack in the VAB. And that would tell them exactly where the orbiter needed to be for the crane movement. Okay. Well, we've enjoyed talking to Triple T here. And uh, yeah. uh, how about anything else that you and your dad made to? Uh, well, I've made uh, brackets for... that I'd take home and, and say, Dad, I need this bent like this, you know. And, and then I'd take it back to work and I'd give it to an engineer and he'd draw a blueprint and he'd put a VO7 number to it. And then it's flight hardware. VO7, vehicle. Orbiter, <laughs> VO seven O. Every number started VO seven O. So if you see VO seven O, that yeah. is an official space shuttle yeah. piece of hardware. Yeah, I forget what it stands. VO seven O. Yeah, I, I've heard those numbers, and I've heard Chuck talk about that. Yeah, our auction guy authenticating things. Well, well, Travis, that's a good. That's a good story. That's <laughs> what we love here in Tales from the White Room. Something <laughs> that was made. Uh, uh, like Fred Flintstone is, you're, you're actually drove your Jeep over yeah. this to get it bent right over some yeah. some cinder blocks, huh? Yeah. It sounds like your dad had his own engineering skills. Oh, he was good. Own, okay? My dad was good. Without a, without a Georgia Tech degree. He taught himself machining. He learned how to be a, a he had his own lathe, his mm. own mill. Yeah, he did lots of cool stuff. Well, we've enjoyed a great week of Stay Curious. We always enjoy you being here, Has Travis. Thank you for, for taking your time to do that. Yep. Uh, it is, of course, Memorial Day weekend. We will not have a Stay Curious show Monday, so everybody can enjoy, uh, the, I'm sure, the our Michiganders up there, Dave Stange and, and uh, uh, Pushker, they're uh, out on the lake or the beach mm -hmm. or the, cool. the uh, beaches on Lake Erie Ooh. up there, maybe. Dave Stang uh, didn't, tra didn't traverse Michigan. The what? He didn't traverse. Dave Stang. Yes, what about Dave Stang? He didn't traverse City. Oh, Traverse City. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. He's in Traverse City, Michigan. That's a popular vacation spot up there. Well, thank you all for staying curious today. We want to just yeah. think a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, some people that mean a lot to us, uh, our, our International Space Station crew. ST uh, Expedition 67 up there. And uh, see left to right, on the left there's Bob Hines. He just did a spacewalk. Samantha Cristoforetti is Italian up there for her second stint. Uh, the next uh, three guys are Russian. Okay. And, uh, uh, and then uh, that's uh, Jessica... Oh, I, I'm making sure those guys are Russian. I couldn't be <laughs> wrong. Now, I'm not going to pronounce their name. Oleg, Dennis, and Sergi. That's good enough. <laughs> and then Jessica Watkins, an Artemis astronaut, making her 
first flight to space. I'm sure that? she's enjoying it. And the commander, Jell Lindgren there. And what was cool was seeing them get inside of the Boeing Starliner when it was yeah. done. I saw pictures of them inside checking it out. Right. Because maybe they'll take another trip up there to the space station. Yeah. And, that. and uh, uh, so here is our beautiful backdrop of the International Space Station that, that uh, uh, you can see uh, uh, orbiting the Earth uh, 16 times a day. You can't see it orbit 16 <laughs> times a day. But I even get alerts on an app that tells me in the daytime when it's overhead. And I think about these astronauts up there doing their job, yeah. uh, doing an incredible thing in one of, let's face it, one of the most amazing vehicles mankind has ever built. Yeah, it's right. amazing. And uh, we were talking, Marty uh, and I were talking uh, uh, with Anita Truex, our office manager. Right. And Anita was asking how many of the American astronauts have been in the military? Wow. And we kind of bandied about, and well, she Googled it. And so, number one, there's 330 American astronauts, current and former, according to wherever she Googled. So we're sure it's within uh, uh, pretty close. Out of that 330, how many would you guess have a military background? I'm going to have to say half at least. I would yeah, well, you'd be low. Ah, 219 out of 330. Wow. I should have done the math on that. That's over 75%, I'm sure, yeah. uh, uh, have gone the military route to uh, outer space in our astronaut corps of 330. And we just want everyone to uh, honor our fallen heroes, uh, military or not, and uh, uh, keep in mind all the, the the heartbreak around the world and here in America with the tragedies going on and war and so forth. It's hard to wrap your head around yeah, sometimes. sometimes. And, and sometimes I don't. I bury my head in the sand about these horrible things that go on. Yeah. But uh, we persevere, and the light at the end of the tunnel is always man exploring, wanting to see the unknown, do the unknown, and find out more about himself as he discovers new places to go and visit. That's what this miraculous machine behind us is all about, the International Space Station. So, Marty? Anything else we need to fix up there as we tell everyone, have a happy Memorial Day. Uh, and uh, thank you, Carlton Bailey, for this awesome photograph he took last week of the yeah. launch of the Boeing Starliner there. And uh, can't get much better <laughs> launch photo than yeah, that. That's a good picture. Uh, in, a, in a patriotic way. So yeah. uh, we hope everybody is safe and comes back next Tuesday. Uh, uh, for our Stay Curious program. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, our wonderful staff here at the American Space Museum that has been supporting Marty and I through over 580 episodes That's awesome. under the direction of Karen Conklin. We are headed in the right direction with our STEAM program and with Stay Curious and and a lot of great visitors coming in from around the country and around the world. Yeah, we so, do. So come join us. Travis, you got anything else to say? Uh, I did, uh, I'm going to bring this up probably later, but I did talk to a museum in New Smyrna Beach today, a, a natural history, mm -hmm. and they want to kind of partner up with us, send us some guests to our museum, and maybe we send guests to theirs, so we're going to talk to Karen about it. All right. Well, we're always into partnerships. Yeah. That, that's, that's my thing, is bridging the space between everybody out That's there. what I want, so. yeah. So uh, we thank everyone for watching Stay Curious and supporting us financially. And uh, we do truly wish everyone a wonderful Memorial Day. Yeah. Safe and come back. And we'll see you again to what, Travis? Bridge, bridge, we'll see you again to bridge the, the space, space between, between us. us. Come see me, please.